For every astrophotographer's journey, they can get surprisingly far just using a standard camera and a standard tripod. But at some point, you're going to want more. You're going to want more exposure time. You're going to want more focal length. And so you're going to start looking into star trackers. Now, star trackers come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and they can look something like this. Oh, Christ. Or they can look something like this, or even this. But star trackers can also look like this. Okay, to be fair, putting all of these under the umbrella of just being star trackers, especially this one, is kind of saying that a Ferrari and a Prius are the same because they're just cars. But work with me here, all star trackers at their core will follow the night sky so you can get those longer exposures at longer focal lengths and not be restricted by just your standard tripod anymore. <laughs> so what even is this little thing? This is the Move Shoot Move Nomad Star Tracker, probably one of the smallest, if not the smallest star trackers on the market. And maybe even one of the most simplest ones. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because in a moment, you're going to join me out in the field where I'm going to show you this thing in action. But I just wanted to thank Move Shoot Move for sending me this Nomad Star Tracker to check out and see what I think of it. Are you ready to get cold? Let's go. All right. So here we are. We've actually gotten outside. Um, I'm at one of my favourite little spots. It's about 30 minutes from the light pollution of Canberra, but it's far enough that the skies are dark enough to get some, some really great images of the Milky Way. Now, speaking of which, you can't see it, but it's, it's up there. It's, it's right up there at the moment. So I've got my camera set up just on the tripod, sitting all on its own. And I'm going to use my typical go-to settings. This is my Canon R5 Mark II with a 24 to 70 mil lens at f2.8. Let's just see what a standard shot is. Standard for this gear, 15 seconds, ISO 3200, f2.8. Let's check it out. Now, this camera setup, I know does a pretty decent job at focusing on the stars if I can find a decently big and bright one. So let's see how that goes for us. So I can see some bright stars up there. Tilt screens are just the best. So using, in this case, 15 times live view, I'm just gonna give the camera a chance to autofocus. That's not too bad. I'm now gonna set the camera to manual focus so the camera doesn't try to refocus when I hit it again. And I'm going to zoom out. And I'm now just very, I normally have my remote trigger on, but just for the sake of this video, I'm just going to very gently hit this and let's see what we get after 15 seconds. All right. Oh, God, that's, that's just gorgeous. First, first shot, autofocus. Just going to zoom in. So we just need to check sharpness. A tiny bit soft, but a tiny bit soft, but for the purposes of this exercise, it'll do me. So let's go to 70 mil and see what we get. So at the moment I'm shooting at 24 mil, let's go to 70 mil. It's going to take the opportunity to refocus while I'm out here. And this time I'm going to use the rock backwards and forth. So I'm going into my 15 times. I've got a nice bright star on the screen and I'm just going to rock the focus ring backwards and forwards, getting it smaller and smaller. The goal at about there, about there should do. Okay, let's have a look at this shot. Very gentle on the trigger. Gone from 24 mil to 70 mil and what I'm expecting to see is some significant star trailing. Oh. Look at that absolute stunner of just right into the core of the Milky Way. But if we zoom in though, obvious trailing in the stars. So this is where a star tracker is going to come into its own. Let's have a look. So bringing out again, the move, shoot, move, nomad star tracker. I mean, look at this thing. It's, it's crazy just how small it is, but I'm going to get it set up on my camera now and get it polar aligned, and I'll talk you through that 
and then we're going to see the results that we get from that. So of course, camera's got to come off, and I also need uh, the ball head to come off. So Move Shoot Move didn't send me a base to mount the tracker onto, so I'm just using an, a William Optics tracking base. This is an upgrade. I like buying bling. Uh, but what this will let me do is very fine tune adjustment, the left and right, as well as the up and down. First, we want to get this guy on. There we go. And I need the tripod pretty much pointing as south as I can. So I'm just going to use my phone to check south. That's not too bad but I'm going to be using my phone even more in a second. So small, I've lost it. Now, because from where I am to polar align, I need to look south. Looking south is looking over the light pollution of Canberra. That means finding the target of the South Celestial Pole, or in particular, a small cluster of stars called the Octans, is pretty tough. So I'm actually going to use my iPhone to polar align, but to do that, I need the little bracket on the back of this. So let me grab that. Hysterically, the bracket, so I've got the phone bracket, excellent. But uh, I've somehow left at home the bracket which goes onto the back of the Nomad, which this would have attached to. Well, luckily for me, I've got a plan B. So let's get this mounted up first, nice and tight. And I actually want to get the camera and the tripod head mounted on top of the Nomad uh, because once you get it polar aligned, if you then put your gear on top of that, that can cause it to sag or shift. And it's also a risk that you're going to kick the tripod or do something along those lines and mess up your polar alignment. So I'm just going to connect these. So just making sure that I'm getting my tripod head so it can be in the more upright position. And we're just going to screw that onto the front here. Now on top of that, I'm going to put my camera. And at this point too, I'm going to turn on the move, shoot, move, mainly because I want the gears to start engaging. I, I don't know how much backlash there is in this little device, uh, but by getting it up and running now, by the time I actually get to shooting, uh, all the gears should have been engaged and it will be twisting for me. Okay, camera's all up. What's my plan B? What did I have up my sleeve? Thankfully, I 3D printed this bracket. Eric the Viking, uh, link down below for where you can get this one, made for polar aligning with a smartphone on the Move Shoot Move Nomad. The way this one actually works, it's, it's a reverse polar alignment. Normally your polar, for us in the Southern Hemisphere, you're polar aligning to the South Celestial Pole. What this will actually let me do is polar aligned to the North Celestial Pole. Yeah, I can't see it. It's through the guts of the Earth, but my phone can see, and it, it can see using other technology, GPS, etc. Okay, uh, quick jump in, Glenn from the future here. Just need to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so the bracket that I was missing is this little guy, which the phone holder was going to attach to. The way it works, you'll get your phone in there, have it vertical like this, Put your phone in place, see if I can do this one-handed, and then you'll use your app of choice to get polar alignment. Now, past Glenn, who we're gonna get right back to, but he's talking about reverse polar aligning off the North Celestial Pole. What's he talking about? So when you use the phone adapter from Move, Shoot, Move, the Nomad will be pointing up, in my case, the South Celestial Pole, which also means that I need to get down to be able to look up at the phone. Now, you would have seen my tripod, it is reasonably high, but it is still, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, it still is a bit of a pain to get down, to be looking up through the phone and then making the adjustments to get your polar alignment. Now my plan B, the way this adapter works, it actually has your phone pointing the other way. So with it in place, we're just going to imagine that that is now pointing up to the South Celestial Pole, which means that if the phone is sitting here on the cradle, we're looking down through the Earth's axis 
down to the North Celestial Pole. And it also makes it so much easier to do a quick alignment because now I can be standing up looking down at my phone instead of having to crouch down and look up and then make my adjustments that way. Anyway, hopefully that explains it. Let's get back to Pascal and he's actually freezing and uh, wants to get this video done so he can go home. So now we've got a little iPhone holder. All I need to do is bring up my app. So I'm using Sky Safari Plus uh, version six. So just, oh, and I'm also, before I open that, gonna take my phone out of my case. Uh, this is a MagSafe case. Uh, look how much it affects the accuracy of the phone. I couldn't say, but for the two seconds it took me to get it out. And also what I like about this 3D print is it's a plastic print and it's got it off to the side of the Nomad. So we've got less metal. I mean, it's still close, but hey, it's an improvement. What I'll be doing is turning on the compass, making the compass active. So we're just gonna do the dance of the compass. Do it with me. Okay. On to our little holder. Gonna let that settle down. Pinch it out. All right. So the compass is active and now I've just got to bring it over to one side. Quicker to move the tripod at this point. There we go. So the phone is looking towards the North Celestial Pole. There we go, it's a bit more like it. Okay, and now we're just going to adjust the declination, getting it into the middle, and then we can just pinch in for extra resolution. And this is where we see the compass you start bobbing and weaving. Now at these focal lengths, super high accuracy, not important. So I'm actually going to bring it to there and down to there and just across. I'm gonna lock it in at this point. Let's do a test shot. Let's, let's have a look. All right, so we're gonna point the camera back to where we were before. And as you can see, I'm just using the ball head straight off the Nomad. I just wanted to keep things simple tonight. We're still at 70 mil and we're going to recheck focus. Again, the rocking method. About there it'll do. And I am gonna use my remote trigger now so I don't have to wait. Little trick, if you are using a trigger, loop it around the neck of your tripod, down and through, make a loose knot. What this means is as you let the trigger go, it's not going to be tugging at the camera itself. It's going to be off the neck of the tripod. Just a little tip there for you. But let's have a look at this, 15 seconds. All right, let's have a look at this. For 15 seconds at 70 millimeters, yep, we're still there. Uh, lovely sharp stars. I didn't spend all that much time on the polar alignment and I didn't even zoom in to get it really extra dialed in. And at 70 mil, I'm already taking 15 seconds with almost pinpoint stars. Now, I've actually just noticed one of my favorite nebula, the Rho Nebula, it's just hiding up above. So I'm just gonna see if I can get the camera pointing to that because that'll just be an extra special bit of detail. Oh, there it is, lovely. There's those dust lanes, wonderful. So one of the things with wide aperture lenses is that they can be just a touch soft at their absolute widest, f2.8 in this case, compared to say f4 or even 5.6. So I'm just gonna stop this lens down to f4 I'm gonna increase my exposure to 30 seconds. And by doing that, that's going to balance out the loss of light from the aperture to allow more light in from a longer exposure. Keeping up. Now, while we're waiting on that one, did you see how much fiddling I had to do with the Nomad? That's right, none. Bolted it on, 
got in the right direction, polar alignment, and it's literally on or off. Yeah. It's so it's such a simple device. Now you don't want to push it beyond what it's really capable of, but honestly, for these really wide angle for Astro, where we're under a hundred mil, under two hundred mil, as long as our weight isn't getting too crazy, this is about one point eight kilos sitting on top of it right now. Uh, you're just going to have so much fun. Let's have a look at this one. All right, thirty second exposures. Let's have a look. Sharpness is a hair off, but no trailing. What does 70 mil look like at 30 seconds without a tracker? Let's have a look at that. So I'm just gonna turn the Nomad off. So I haven't touched anything. Going for that same shot again. Oh, look, I don't even have to pinch and zoom. Uh, I can see, yeah, very obvious trailing at 70 mil. So to normally get this shot without trailing at 70 mil, you've got to be down around five seconds, maybe even less, depending on your camera. Uh, so so the, the, the Nomad's just coming in great. By the way, if you're interested in getting yourself the Move Shoot Move Nomad, there's a link down in the description. It's an affiliate link, but use the code Glenny at checkout and you'll get 5% off. So I've had basic dumb trackers like this. And by dumb, I'm not being disparaging. By dumb, I mean there's no go-to functionality in it. I can't control it by a computer. It's all up to me to make sure that I've got it accurately polar aligned, that I've got my camera pointing where I want it to be, and it's literally that on or off scenario. So I've had dumb trackers like this in the past, but it was the dim distant past. And I'm sure there would have been some apps for iPhones back then, but I just wasn't that aware of them. And because I couldn't get a decent polar alignment for my location where I am right now, uh, it just frustrated the hell out of me. And there's nothing worse when you're out at night and it's cold and your hands are starting to go numb and the gear just isn't performing. And so I didn't use these basic trackers for many, many years for this one reason. Now with the smarts in our phones, along with things like 3D printed brackets or other brackets that we can bolt onto the device to put our phone on to get our polar alignment. That way, suddenly within mere minutes, I'm polar aligned enough to be taking multiple exposures at 70 mil focal length, which is just not feasible without tracking. So this is going to be a lot of fun when I'm not playing with my bigger mounts, more complicated mounts, and I just want to get out, use my standard camera and lens, but still get longer exposures with less noise and more detail. So one of the other things that these trackers are great for, and this is what I'm going to finish the video on, is I'm about to set it running for 15 minutes worth, maybe a bit more, of continuous exposures so I can do some stacking later on. But the benefit of having a tracker is the camera is going to follow the sky for those 15 minutes. Because you can do stacking with, without a tracker, but depending on how long you shoot for, you've actually got to reposition the camera every five or 10 minutes because your target is just going to keep moving out of frame. But as you're going to see in a moment, uh, this is going to follow the sky and hang around for a few seconds more and you're going to see the results. Thanks for watching. Get out there and shoot something awesome.